Okay, guys, our goal in this next uh, example is to go through each one of these scenarios and determine, well, what does this do to our working capital? So let's take it one step at a time, see what happens. Here we go. Number one, they tell us we're a lower of cost or market company, and the company has uh, inventory that originally had a cost of 45, but now it has a net realizable value of only 42. So lower of cost or market, remember, old U.S. gap market was the middle value between your replacement costs, net realizable value, and the net realizable value minus a normal profit. So we kind of still use that for LIFO. But for FIFO, we're like IFRS. It's lower of cost or net realizable value. So here, with the inventory having a net realizable value of only 42, we're going to have to write the inventory down. So if we write the inventory down, current assets are going down. With no change to current liabilities, what's happening to our working capital? Our working capital is decreasing. So let's take a look. Decrease. Nice. Number two, specific identification is the way we're doing our inventory and our labor and material costs continue to rise. So your direct material, your direct labor. As those costs go up, those are manufacturing costs. Those are product costs. So as our cost of goods manufactured goes up, your inventory is going to go up. If your inventory goes up, current assets are going up. With no change to current liabilities, working capital is going to increase as well. So let's see. Increase. We got it. All righty, guys. Scenario number three. We're a FIFO company in a rising price environment. So prices are rising. If you're FIFO, you sell which ones? You sell the old units. And the old units are relatively what? Cheap. What's unsold under FIFO, what's unsold are the new units, which are more expensive. So the new units that are more expensive, that'll make your ending inventory value higher, which will make your current assets higher. No change to current liabilities, so your working capital will be higher as well. And don't forget, if we did a little comparison of LIFO, FIFO, relatively speaking, most ratios look better when a company chooses FIFO because if you're selling the old cheap ones, if you sell the old cheap ones, lower expense, higher profit, higher profit's going to lead to higher retained earnings, higher equity. And which ones are unsold? The unsold are the new expensive ones. So you'll have higher current assets, higher total assets. Okay, so... Most of the time, companies choose FIFO to make their ratios look better. It definitely improves their ratios. But the one downside of FIFO, don't forget, you can't mix and match. If you use FIFO for your financial statements, then you can't use LIFO on the tax return. You'd have to use FIFO. So the major downside is you have higher profit, you're going to have to pay more tax to the government. But outside of that, we like FIFO for most of the ratios. Okay, let's take a look at our next one. Now they tell us we're a LIFO company in a rising price environment. So if you're LIFO, we sell the new, the unsold are the old. So LIFO in a rising price environment, your unsold are the old cheap ones, relatively speaking. So that means your inventory is gonna be lower, current assets will be lower, so your working capital will be lower as well. Okay, so working capital will be lower. Now, keep in mind, the ratios that we just mentioned, if you're LIFO in a rising price environment, why would you want to do this? For tax purposes. The major advantage of using LIFO in a rising price environment, because if you're selling the new, and in a rising price environment, those are expensive, you'll show the government a lower profit. The downside is, though, your ratios don't look so good. You're going to have lower retained earnings, lower equity. And which ones are unsold? Under LIFO, the unsold are the old ones, and the old ones are cheap. So your current assets will be lower. Your total assets will be lower. Okay, so most ratios are negatively affected by choosing LIFO in a rising price environment. The reason companies want to do it, though, if you're profitable... You want to show the government a lower profit, pay less tax, that'll give you higher operating cash flow. But then there's the LIFO conformity rule. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want to get the tax benefit of LIFO, then you also have to use it on your financials. 
I kept emphasizing most ratios would be negatively affected. Is there any ratio that's positively affected? Yeah. Anytime you have a lower asset or you have lower inventory, the one ratio that would benefit by using LIFO, you're going to have a higher cost of goods sold, lower inventory. Your inventory turnover would actually be higher. Okay, so your inventory turnover would be higher. But other than that, your profit margin doesn't look as good. Your debt to equity doesn't look as good. Your working capital doesn't look as good. Okay, but there is one exception. Alrighty, so decrease. Let's try our next one. Now they tell us weighted average and moving average. We're in a rising price environment. So remember, when we do an average cost of all goods available for sale, divided by your number of units available for sale. If prices are rising, then your cost of all goods available for sale is going to be higher. Then your average cost per unit is going to be higher. If your average cost per unit is higher, both your ending inventory as well as your cost of goods sold would be relatively higher. So in a rising price environment and you're using weighted average, if your cost of all goods available for sale goes up, then your average cost per unit goes up. Therefore, both your ending inventory and your cost of goods sold would be relatively higher. If you have higher ending inventory, you'll have higher current assets. Higher current assets will lead to higher working capital. Okay, guys, let's do our next one. Storage costs. The rent costs associated with facilities where inventories are stored has declined. Okay, so look, anytime your storage costs go down, a storage is a carrying cost. Whenever your carrying costs go down, that's an incentive to carry more inventory. So your working capital would be relatively higher because your current assets would be higher. So anytime we're dealing with lower carrying costs, that would be an incentive to carry more inventory. Now remember, we don't want to carry surplus inventory generally. Too much inventory will reduce your profitability because of those high carrying costs. Anytime, though, you don't have enough inventory to meet your demand, you'll have lost sales. So we're gonna, both of those are bad news. Higher carrying costs are bad news. Lost sales are bad news. We want to minimize the cost, right? So all things being equal, if my carrying costs go down, hey, I'll carry more inventory. All right, let's take a look at our next one, guys. Insurance costs per unit have increased. So look, that's a storage, that's a carrying cost. So in this one, if your inventory cost goes up, your carrying cost, because our insurance has gone up, carrying costs go up, that's an incentive to carry less inventory. Lower current asset, lower working capital. So the exact opposite of the storage cost. If the cost of insuring your inventory has gone up, you're gonna wanna carry less of it. You carry less of it, you'll have lower inventory, lower inventory, lower current assets, lower working capital. Okay, our next one, opportunity costs. Interest rates on money market in, uh, investments decrease by 100 basis points. So the opportunity costs, remember, you don't want to have surplus inventory because that's money that you spent on manufacturing inventory that could have been invested elsewhere. So here they tell us the interest rates on money market instruments decreases. So in terms of inventory uh, volume, well, if there's a lower opportunity cost, if there's a lower opportunity cost, then that's an incentive to carry more inventory. So your working capital would be higher because your current assets would be higher. So again, a lot of times you don't want to have unnecessary surplus inventory, too much safety stock, because had you not used that money to manufacture the inventory, it could have been invested elsewhere. When interest rates are high, well, then there's a high opportunity cost so that you better not have too much inventory. Conversely, when interest rates are low and your opportunity cost is low, I'd rather have more safety stock, right? So if you have more safety stock, higher inventory, higher current asset, higher working capital. Okay, our next one, obsolescence, spoilage, management has noticed an increase in spoiled inventory. Alrighty, so whenever we have more spoiled inventory, if you've got inventory that quote unquote normal or abnormal, when it is spoiled inventory, obviously that's not good news. So nonetheless, when it's spoiled, your inventory is gonna go down. We can't sell that. So there's gonna be less inventory. Lower inventory, lower current assets. Lower current assets, lower working capital. 
Guys, just one more note on the spoiled inventory for you guys. Don't forget, there's two types of spoilage. Normal spoilage, abnormal spoilage. Okay, whenever it's normal spoilage, that's part of your cost of inventory. When it's abnormal spoilage, don't forget, that's a period cost. Okay, but any way you slice it, when there's more spoilage, when that has increased, all right, as a general rule of thumb, we're writing down that inventory because it's spoiled. You write down that inventory, you're going to have lower working capital, lower current assets. Okay, guys, our next one, safety stock. Concerns over stock out costs lead to higher safety stock levels. So look, if you have higher safety stock, inventory values, inventory quantities are going to go up. So your working capital will go up with it. Okay, so what are they telling us here with EOQ? Labor costs related to order placements of inventory have increased. So anytime your cost of ordering, if your cost per order should go up, then logically speaking, we want to order less. And when we order, we want the quantity to be higher. So when your ordering costs go up, you want to order less. And then when you do order, you want to order a bigger quantity. If you order a bigger quantity, your inventory goes up. If your inventory goes up, current assets go up and you know working capital is going up with it. Okay, guys, our last one. Just-in-time inventory. Okay, remember, the goal is to eliminate non-value-added surplus inventory. So just-in-time inventory is a way to make sure we buy the raw material or manufacture the good just in time to meet the demand. What does that avoid? Having excess surplus inventory. So if you can carry lower inventory, that's going to give you lower current assets. Lower current assets will lead to a lower working capital. By the way, just-in-time inventory, while it negatively affects your working capital, don't forget what's the major reason you would want to use just-in-time inventory. So when you do your cost of goods sold, divided by your average inventory, if you can minimize your inventory levels to the amount just needed to meet your demand, what does that do to your turnover? You're going to have a higher turnover. If you have a higher turnover, what does that do to your number of days to sell? Your number of days to sell is going to go down. And if your number of days to sell goes down, your cash conversion cycle goes down with it. Okay, so excess inventory, there's no value added. So we want to eliminate that. So the effect on working capital, though, will be a lower working capital. Excellent exercise showing you the ripple effect, right? Changing inventory and what have you. Okay, let's move on. Let's do our next one.